Good morning everyone and welcome to our backyard. Today's video I would like to talk about Greg's Mist Flower which is right here. It happens to be a Texas native and it is a butterfly magnet especially for monarch butterflies and queen butterflies. There's a couple of things that I want to share with you on this particular plant and um, I also am going to need to prune it back because it rained very hard here um, over the last couple of days and we've gotten all oh, four or five inches of rain and it um, flopped over. So let me get a little closer. You'll see that it definitely flopped over my um, brick border here, but the beautiful thing about Greg's Mist Flower is it survived our summer wonderfully in dramatic fashion. And I got this last fall. Oh, maybe it was early winter. And I planted it in early spring. And so it was just in, you know, a normal nursery pot and it was a small plant and it has really grown. In fact, they say you can think of it as more of a ground cover than an upright grower, but it does grow upright. Let me show you. So I planted it here in the ground and it's grown to where it's even pretty darn tall. I mean, this is at least four feet tall, which is only reason is because it's being supported by the salvia back here, but it's blooming really nicely. It's in full sun here. It can get partial shade as long as it does get some sun. And the wonderful thing about this is it doesn't have any pests. So, the foliage has been beautiful. It flowers in the spring and summer, but fall is the time that it just explodes with blooms. And that coincides with the monarch migration. You know, and I was reading an article about queen butterflies. And in particular, I've had more queen butterflies in my yard this year than I have in any previous year, and in particular the males. And there's a substance or a compound in this Greg's Mist flower that um, is vital to the queen butterflies, which they transfer, the males transfer to the females. And so um, it's a real interesting interesting little tidbit about this plant because <laughs> I've been so surprised to see as many queens in the yard as I have. So as I mentioned, this is flopped over and even though there's beautiful um, blooms here, I don't want this on my grass and so I will be pruning it and I've actually pruned this multiple times. Um, during the year just because I don't want it over in the grass and so it's really easy to easy to prune I'm going to um, take it and I usually take it back oh cut back to um, a, a set of leaves and I'm just gonna go through and I am going to prune this and then I will be back was a little bigger job than I was expecting it was going to be but it had flopped over and um, it had already killed the grass at the base of the of the brick just because the grass was not getting any sun so you can see you can heavily clip it back um, and it just it's just done very well 
you know, hearing that it can certainly be a ground cover, I can, <laughs> I can see, um, I can see how that can transpire because just in this summer season, it has really grown and I will probably next year need to keep it more under control than I did this year. This year for me was an experiment to see how it would grow in the garden and I'm very happy with it. Um, now that I know what its habit is and how it grows, I am certainly going to be um, a little more on top of the growth because I don't want it to take over as a ground cover in this location. Certain locations I wouldn't mind actually, but this location I don't want a ground cover. And as you can see, it does spread um, pretty, pretty heavily. So, um, and then it's going over into, let me come over here, it's coming over into my lantana even somewhat. And this is my mounding lantana. Oh, good. So it, um, and this has just been in one season. So this is a plant I always want to have in the yard, but I do need to keep more on top of it. Um, and like I said, it took our summer heat like a champ, which some plants did not. And I really like the fact that I have blooms um, for the hummingbird, for the butterflies, the monarch butterflies that are coming through on migration. Even though I did have to cut back, this should rebound. I do have quite a few blooms here still. Um, and then of course, they're high <laughs> in, in, the, in the salvia. One thing about this is this is root hardy to zero degrees Fahrenheit. And um, it also, if you do freeze, it will uh, go to the ground, but you can, it certainly comes back from the root from what I've read. And then the other thing is, is you can very aggressively um, prune it, deadhead it, and it takes it like a champ. So the only, downside that I see is it is a fairly aggressive grower in the garden and if you don't want it to take over a space you need to keep it trimmed up and I only trimmed it this way and you can see I didn't right by the brick and so I need to be um, thinking where strategically where I would like to put this um, for next year so anyway I wanted to share this with you because it was such a champ this summer and it is a native it's got a really pretty color foliage and it really doesn't have pests so if you are looking for a pollinator friendly, especially butterfly friendly flower under those conditions, this is a good one to consider. And as you can see, I cut off a lot this morning. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate you watching and if you have any questions let me know or if you have any experience growing Greg's Mist Flower and you have any particular hints or things you would like to share I'd love to hear them. The sun's just starting to peek through. <laughs> everybody. Well, I hope you have a great day today and I hope to see you again.